Welcome back to Prompt Circle, where we discuss how to deploy AI into real world applications and use cases. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Gemini and its function calling feature. Now, this is a follow up to the first look at Gemini video where I explored how you could, you know, set up a Gemini application. Uh, in Slack, we built a Slack bot that was essentially powered by Gemini and I showed like exactly how to set it all up. Um, if you haven't watched that video, I'm going to put it in the description so you could take a look at it because I think it would be useful. Um, I'm also going to um, make the GitHub repository available so that you can clone that and use that to follow along for this video. Now, function calling is very critical when you are looking to connect an LLM to your functions. LLMs are really great at answering questions, but they're really good at also extracting entity or extracting context from a piece of message. So they can basically convert that context into JSON um, objects, which you can then use as attributes that can call your own function. So as an example, if you were looking to, um, you know, ask your bot to go search for what the weather was, it would take whatever you've said in English, it would detect, say, for instance, your location and go ahead and provide you with the weather for that location by going to call that function. Um, so. In our example, we're going to be doing this for something that is very, very common inside uh, most organizations. There's always an internal help desk. And if you're going to be building a chatbot to power an internal help desk, one of the things that you might want to do is to give it the ability to create uh, tickets inside other systems. Now, in my example, we're going to be creating a ticket in Slack whenever someone sends a message. So as an example, let's say we're using the example of an IT support ticket. I might say I have been trying uh, to log in all morning. Seems like my VPN is not working. Now, what I expect the bots to do here is to create a ticket uh, for me uh, based on the message I just sent in. And as you can see in its response, it said, okay, I have created a ticket for you. Someone will be in touch shortly to help you resolve the issue. In the meantime, please check the company VPN troubleshooting guide that I have attached. Now it's kind of going a little rogue here because there's nothing attached here. But what has happened also is that when you look at my support channel, where I'm capturing tickets, you would notice that a new ticket has been created. So uh, it says that there is a VPN troubleshooting thing. It's a technical issue and the user is unable to access VPN for several hours. So how are we doing this? Well, what we're doing essentially is that we're taking the key salient points from that message that was sent in. So in our case here, that was, I am having issues logging in. So it detects that there is a problem with VPN. It understands the technical problem. And then it uses that information to call a function that we have, which is designed to create tickets in Slack, just by simply basically posting a message inside Slack. So I'm going to be showing you how to do this in Gemini. Um, I would encourage you to go take a look at their documentation where they have gone through this. I'll also put the link to this documentation inside the description and they actually explain with some examples how you can deal with function calling. So let's go ahead and look at our code to see how this works and see exactly how uh, we've built this out. So, okay, jumping into the code, the very first thing I want to show you is my ticket creating function. So let's go to create tickets.py. And essentially what I am calling a ticket here is basically extracting the subject, um, a type of question, a description, and then posting that into a support channel inside Slack. Um, it's a common way organizations actually organize their internal help desks without necessarily building something completely 
uh, sophisticated you could use slack channels to operate your support ticket channel so when a message comes in when a ticket comes in you post it into a channel people go into that channel figure it out um, and take and, and and actually try to solve the problem inside that channel so that's basically what this function is doing so the function basically uh, takes in a ticket id takes in a subject it takes in the type um, of question that is being called who is sending the question in and it provides a description as well as the status we're hard coding it to new and it takes that information um, which has been created as a message and it uses it to send a message into this particular channel that's all that's really happening here and once the message has been uh, sent we send this response back so what we want is for our um, model uh, Gemini in this case to provide these parameters which can then be used to call this function when they are retrieved so we're gonna go through it step by step so that you can see what's going on so let's jump into the Gemini underscore bot uh, underscore funk underscore function uh, underscore calling sorry the py so this is where I am doing this example now I've added a few other files inside this github repository which contains other types of functions so this is the pure Gemini this is sort of the palm for the older version of the model which they are calling legacy now uh, Google is calling this legacy so it seems like palm is not going to be used any anymore it's going to be purely Gemini um, I also added things like uh, you know the app manifest if you're going to be setting up a slack app so the, the entire thing contains everything you need to set this all uh, all up so let's go ahead and look at our actual uh, application here so um, all we really need is to bring in vertex AI preview uh, gen uh, and from there we want to import our generative models and we also want to import generative, you know, the, the part which is basically kind of um, a class that handles the inputs. Um, that's really the only thing and we're bringing our ticket in our create ticket application we're bringing a function we're bringing it in here because we're gonna, we're gonna be calling it from here and the very first thing we want to do is to initialize our vertex AI we're using Gemini Pro there's also Gemini Pro vision if you're using um, any you know use case that requires you to actually process images or videos as input uh, we have our login here all set up so the first thing we're doing is that we're creating a description of our function so that's the very first thing you do in function calling so whether it is um, in OpenAI or in um, Gemini you're basically going to create a function declaration so that's what they're calling it in Google they're calling a function declaration so it's the same thing in if you go to look at OpenAI and I have a video on OpenAI as well uh, assistance and function calling which I will add to the description if you want to check it out and you can see here um, basically this declaration is an open API specification uh, that describes the attributes that are required to make a function call so for, for us in creating a ticket we have a create a ticket name we have a description description is really important because description explains to the model what this particular uh, function does so in this case says creates a ticket in the slack channel this function takes this the subject the type of question and the detailed description and creates a, a ticket so it describes that so whatever um, you send a message that is related to creating a ticket it uses this information to know that okay I need to create a function here now you want to define your parameters so on the parameters you want to define a different things so for instance I have a few properties within this object uh, one for the subject which describes what the subject does the type of question and then a description so this is me telling the LLM uh, telling Gemini uh, Pro here that these are the attributes I want you to extract from any message that comes in and then I'm also saying that these are required attributes as well so basically that's what we're, we're doing there now the next thing you want to do is to uh, set up a toolkit for your uh, model so the way the models work is that you you give them tools right very very similar to OpenAI as well and OpenAI assistant API uh, like I said I, I do have a video on it and it basically describes this as well so you give the model tools and in this case we're adding the very first tool on the 
function declarations, we're adding one tool, which is our create ticket func, which is this declaration here. So we're setting that up as our tool. All right, so let's use a very simple example to understand what the output of um, a function call could look like. So in this function here, we're, we're defining a model response function. We're passing a text and this would be like a message or something like that. And we're using the generate content um, method here uh, to do this. Um, so remember, we have our model set up up there to uh, generative model and um, we're setting generate content. So there's several methods. There's generate content, there's start chat, and we'll look at start chat very, very shortly. But generate content basically gives you the typical text generation capabilities. But in this case, we are adding something different. So you've probably seen this already, but we're adding the text, which is the message. We're adding a generation configuration. So this contains all the NLM configuration, your temperature, your top fee, your stop sequences, uh, maximum tokens, things like that. But we're just setting temperature to zero because that's the only thing that we want to capture here. And then you're defining the tools. You can have multiple tools and this is why it's an array, which means you can have multiple functions here. So we defined our tool earlier on. We created one tool. Uh, we created a tool called uh, our ticket tool, which basically allows us to create uh, tickets. We pass our to create ticket function uh, declaration into that tool. So it has access to that tool. Now you can have multiple tools, like I said, but in this case, we're just using one tool here. Now, whenever a call is made, there are two or more possible types of responses you can get. There are text responses which will return text messages directly, so responses which you can send back to the user, but there's also responses called the function call response. And when you get the function call response, what is going to be in that response is just going to be arguments. And these are arguments that you can use to make the function call. So this is what you're gonna be looking out for. So when you check your response, the candidates, which is where all of the response coming back from the model is, you wanna be checking for the content type, which is the function call. So as you can see here, and I, can, I have a, an output here, this is what it looks like. So it has a name, which is the name of the function, and then it has arguments. And you can see the, in the arguments, there are a bunch of fields in there and there's a key value pair. So there is a type of question, subject, uh, computer issue. This is because I ran this particular function, by the way, I said I needed help with my computer. And when I run it, it generated this particular function argument or this set of arguments. So this is what you need to call that create ticket function when you're ready to call your function. So while this is, you know, cool, like I can run this and I can get the function back, but it's not necessarily doing exactly what I want it to do because what I actually intend for it to do is to also call the function itself. And that's what we're doing in this particular function that we've created here. First one was more just for illustrative purposes. But in this function here, what we're doing is that first we're setting some context where we're explaining to the model, like you're an internal IT support agent and you're basically going to be creating tickets. We're doing the function calling chat. We're starting a chat because what we really wanted to do is not just to generate the function arguments. We wanted to actually create the ticket and tell us if it actually did create a ticket or not. So to do that, we need to use the start chat because the start chat keeps a little bit of a memory when you're using, when you're starting a, a chat session with um, the model, it keeps a little bit of a memory, which allows you to kind of have a back and forth, a more conversational style experience, which is different from the generate experience. So here, what we're going to be doing first and foremost is that we're going to start our chat. And each time we want to interact with the model, we will use the send message method, basically. So what we do here is basically we say, okay, we have our context and then we have a message that comes in. We want to combine these two just to give it a little bit of instruction. It can do this even without the instruction, but I think very important to always be very as specific as possible and as descriptive as possible as to what you want the model to do. So here we're saying that uh, send a message and that would include 
the message that is coming from the user in addition to the context we've defined as well as the tools that have been defined so that's what we're doing here this is a little bit different from the one we had earlier on so when sending a message that's what we're doing now what it's going to do is going to check first and foremost for the function call like we saw earlier on and we're going to extract the information we're going to extract those arguments so we're parsing that response this response that we get here right we're parsing that response and extracting the key values that we need once we extract those values we're creating the tickets with those values so we're passing those values to our create ticket function and once we're done creating the ticket we provide a response back from our function so whenever a ticket is created we get a, a response back and then we want to pass that response back to our function calling chat uh, function calling chat dot send message so we're sending it back to the model to say by the way we've called that function and here is a response so the response could be um, a positive response for instance saying you know the message has been created or uh, sorry the ticket has been created or it could be a negative one that is saying that the ticket hasn't been created what we're trying to do by going with this approach is to ensure that the response we send back provide some kind of confirmation about whether the function was run correctly or not. So when we run this and say, here is the, um, you know, here is actually that response that we got back from the function call uh, and we, we put in, and this time around, basically we're using pat.from function response. So this dot from function response ensures that this is for specifically for this particular function we're calling the create for the create ticket function here's the response we got back and when we do that that gives the llm an understanding of what has happened which allows it to generate another response and that response is what we want to send back uh, to that user so basically that's what we're doing right here we're taking the text from that response and we're sending it back to the user so whenever you know a ticket is raised um, you know and it's created it's successful want to send it has been successfully created if it's not successfully created want to say it wasn't successfully created and provide a reason why it wasn't now the, the next part is just simply our slack message handler where we are going through and basically calling um you know handling a message so whenever a message gets sent we're calling our function calling chat and providing the message text to it and whatever response we get back we're sending that response back and we're treading it um, as you saw earlier on when we were um, looking at the example. So whenever we send a message, we're treading that response back and we're creating the ticket as well. I hope this is really helpful for you. I think this is very, very key as you deploy assistants and agents uh, powered by these large language models into production. I'll be exploring a lot of function calling in my future videos and you'll see me talk about it quite a lot. Uh, until next time, have a great one. If you think that this is a great content, if it is useful to you, please consider uh, dropping a like for us and also uh, subscribing to the channel. We release videos quite frequently looking at specifically how to implement LLM in production, what use cases are out there, um, especially around use cases that you can deploy to tools like Slack, Discord, WhatsApp, that can get you uh, get your products out there to users immediately, get them working um, out there uh, in the market. Until next time, have a great one. Cheers. Bye.